right, welcome back to the channel. Today I am making some barrel extensions for my Weber kettles. I have a cookout coming up and I want to cook some chicken leg quarters over some direct heat. And I want to make the cooking surface a little higher for my Webers. So I'm just going to stop talking and you can start watching. All right, I lied about the stop talking part, but if you want to pick up one of these torches, it's just a cheap one from Harbor Freight. Uh, I didn't want to spend a lot of money on it. It was a little bit cheaper than going elsewhere, but you know, saved an extra buck here and there. And you just start by really burning all the paint off, getting everything off the inside. And I found that an oil drum has no coating on the inside. Some barrels, like you might go for a food safe barrel, they have an epoxy coating and that can be really hard to burn off. Got this barrel. Nice and blued up. It's tacky. I just covered it in some oil. Got it really hot. Kind of seasoned it like you would a griddle. I think it's crazy that you can still see some of the, uh, the logo. Didn't fully burn off, but all the paint's off of it. That's all that really matters. Let's get to cutting this thing. Using my angle grinder to cut these barrels, as you can see, I have all my safety gear on. You know, you want to make sure you have all your safety gear on. All I did here was just cut directly in the center of the ribs. I didn't measure or do anything. All right, here's the first barrel section cut. Fits real nice on this Jumbo Joe. Still hang the lid off the side. Just gotta get my bolts mounted to raise the cooking grate up. I wanna have about 11 inches from coal bed to cooking grate. It's about the average length or distance uh, for acorns or kamados, things like that. But yeah, there's the first one. I got two more to make. All right, I found here the perfect measurement that I was looking for was the width of some blue painter's tape. So that's what I used as my line. And like I said before, just cut directly down the center of the rib. That's all you need to do. After you get everything cut and rough fitted, you want to go through, kind of even some stuff up and really clean your edges up because metal splinters, they suck. It would be a lot better if the Weber wasn't bent, but not bad. Got a small air gap right there. I just got to hammer the Weber out a little bit. It's the one that got kicked in. I'm not sponsored by anybody. I just like to make these videos, but these Cobalt XTR line drills, impact guns, all that stuff work great. I just need to get myself a grinder. As you can see, I hit my 11 inch mark, which I'm actually surprised because I really kind of winged it. Now I'm installing the bolts. Yes, that's stainless steel hardware. All right. The test was pretty good with the barrels. I'm going to use some gasket sealer. Got that coming tomorrow. So I took the time after using them. I got them all seasoned. There's no paint whatsoever. It was just bare metal, heated up and seasoned with old cooking oil. I believe it was old corn oil. Got like one spot there. I really got to get saturated in there. There was a couple dry spots, but all in all, I think they're turning out really well. This one here, it held a nice steady temperature. I just need to be a little bit better. I drill a hole here and mount a thermometer gauge. I found a two pack of these on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. So far, they seem really nice for the price. I was really, really skeptical, but I don't know, they work.
All right, the gasket material showed up, and now I'm gonna work on getting all the grease and debris removed from the lip of the barrel and also the lip of my Weber kettle lid. I've been wanting to put a gasket on my Weber kettle lid, so this was just motivation. So you just really wanna make sure you have a good clean surface. Once you get everything cleaned up, rub it down with rubbing alcohol. That'll get rid of most of it. All right. It is sitting right around 300 at the grill surface. And it says 275, 280 on the top. The gasket helped out a lot. I have one more modification I'm going to do. I'll be able to get that done tomorrow. But so far, it's holding temperature and it's sealed up pretty good. Only a couple minor leaks. These turnbuckles work really nice and I'll leave a link in the description below where I got them. I believe Amazon. This thing's holding temperature like a champ. It's cooking chicken right now. Both gauges are dead on and that chicken looks amazing. See you at the cookout, and like always, thanks for watching.